some of you may know nothing about. And then I'll also be relating that to extensive reading, and I'm going to go over extensive reading a bit just in case uh, some of you may need a little refresher course on extensive reading. Now, you should have a handout, and that has most of what I've got on, but interestingly enough, on the run, morning run, after I had made the handout and everything, I sort of changed my talk. <laughs> and then at 11 o'clock this morning in the hotel room, I changed it even more. <laughs> so the handout is sort of going to be okay, but it doesn't have everything on it. Now, what I really want to do is this one here. I want to sort of challenge your thinking about teaching reading. I really want to sort of turn things around a little bit. And I'm going to be working on this idea of fluency. And then what I'm going to do is relate it to extensive reading. How, how extensive reading and fluency fit in. And I hope that by the end of this talk, I don't care if you particularly believe me, but I want you to start thinking about what you believe. Hmm. Okay, good. Now, let's go ahead. When we think of reading, we often think of comprehension. And when, when I often I will give my students when I'm starting a, a course for my graduate students, I'll say, complete this sentence, reading is. Okay, now think for a minute. Reading is. Now what word generally are you going to put next? No. Something in the brain. Something in the brain. Oh, no, that I agree. It's, it's, it's magic, it's excitement, it's fun, but that's the, that's the affective side. Cognitively, reading is. You're going to have a word begins with you. Understanding, comprehension, meaning, right? Getting, you know, generally, so when we think of reading, we think generally along getting meaning from a text. Some people might even say decoding, say something like that. So when we think of reading, we often think of reading comprehension. Often we think maybe they're synonymous. But, well, I guess I'm going to use that word quite a bit. But, okay, the B word, but comprehension is the outcome. It's the product of a series of interactive processes. So, so try to get away from this idea that reading is comprehension. That's the result, that's the outcome. Now, read this comprehension, this understanding, this getting the meaning is the product of a series of interactive processes where the reader we as readers use our knowledge, or maybe we could say knowledge is, if I can pluralize it, I guess so, I'm a native speaker, so that's okay, right, Rob? Yes, yeah, sure. no problem. Okay. Knowledge is, we use our knowledge is, and we interact with a text to build, to create, to construct meaning. Okay, so the outcome is comprehension. So maybe we say reading is, that's the result of it. Okay, now, those are two synonyms that we often associate. Now, there's interestingly enough, there's another adjective that we associate with comprehension, that's accuracy. Think about it for a minute. Accuracy. Comprehension. Accuracy. Now, we can actually measure this product. We can measure it. Comprehension questions, tasks, all kinds of things to measure it. And we can talk about poor comprehension, good comprehension. Okay. Now, this traditionally has been the focus of most EFL, and I would probably say most FL, not just EFL, but most L2 foreign language reading instruction. When we're teaching reading, we're doing comprehension. Okay. Any questions on that before I jump around to the next topic. I want to make sure that every, so this is, should be sort of background for some of you, new for some of you, this idea of looking at reading that way. Okay, good. Now, let's look at fluency now. I'm going to look at these three points. What is reading fluency? Why is it important? And then, can we teach fluency? Is something that, can we actually do anything about fluency? Okay. Reading fluency. Think for a minute. Reading fluency. 
Generally, when I ask my graduate students, as I mentioned before, the ones I say, what is reading? Reading is, they'll say comprehension, etc. What is fluency? And there's one word that generally, maybe two words that generally come up when I ask my students something to do with fluency, and they say something like speed. Right, that probably came to your mind. Speed or rate or something like that. It's something, this notion of going along a little bit more quickly. So in preparation, this is what I did the other day. I went to, I went to an online dictionary, and I came up with this, which I thought was kind of neat. Kind of neat. Now let's take a look at it. Ah, I didn't know it was Latin. I had no idea, but yet there's a lot of words in English that are, have a Latin base. And I like 1A, capable of flowing. Isn't that nice? Now that, when I read that, you know what image I had in my mind? A river flowing, right? And because I spent time in, in, in Seoul, in Korea, those of you who are from Korea, there's a Han River that goes uh, through, through Seoul. And I think of that river of flowing, this river flowing. Now, the river flowing is not going to be this, <laughs> right? It's like that. Okay, so I like that, capable of flowing. 1B, capable of moving with ease and grace. Does that help? You know what I thought of when I read that, seriously? I thought ease and grace, and I had this image of a dancer reading, right? <laughs> that, that's okay, but, but we'll keep this notion of ease here. I think ease is really important, and I like to make it into an adjective easily, without effort. So I think that's kind of nice. 2A doesn't work so well, but B is really neat to be effortlessly smooth, rapid, polished. Okay. So I think this sort of gives us a good feel for what fluent reading is. It flows. It's ease. It's effortlessly smooth, rapid. Okay. Now the word rapid is a little bit misleading, and I'm going to come back to that, but it's a bit, I think it's a bit misleading. Now, uh, I spent some time and I did a lot of reading and I tried to understand the research on it and what do, people, what do reading experts say about reading fluency. Often when they talk about reading fluency, they talk about oral reading fluency. But I'm not going to be talking about oral reading fluency today. I'm really going to be talking only about silent reading. Silent reading. Now, <clears throat> the first important concept that we want, or characteristic that we want to keep in mind about fluent reading is that it's automatic. What does automatic mean? Anyone? Yeah, you don't think. It's automatic. For example, if I do it like this, see? <laughs> she drops away, right? Without thinking, automatically. She did that, right? Thank you. <laughs> she couldn't help it. She knew I wasn't going to hit her, but it was automatic without thinking, okay? Now, it's fast, too, generally. Generally, fluency, we had this notion of speed. And here's the kicker. Remember comprehension, accuracy? Fluency, accurate. Fluent reading is accurate reading. Now by that, it brings in this term of sight vocabulary. Are, who's familiar with that term, sight vocabulary? A, hand, a couple of you are, not a lot. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. So I, I figured that, so I'm going to talk a little bit about sight vocabulary. Now, one quick, easy way of thinking about reading vocabulary knowledge is a continuum. On one end, we have words we don't know, unknown words. And then, somewhere along the line, there are words that if we see it, we can stop and think, oh, I know what that word means, yeah. Then there are words that are sort of general vocabulary knowledge. If we, we don't have to think for a long time, but we make, we, our eyes may pause, and here's where the scientific research is really neat. It may pause for like a second, a little bit, and then we get it. Now the sight vocabulary on the other end of the continuum are those words that we recognize automatically, unconsciously, without thinking correctly, accurately, every time, regardless of context. So every time you see the word C-A-T, 
in your reading along. You don't have to stop and think CAT. Oh, yeah, CAT. I know dog. <laughs> or cat. Yeah, cat, cat. Eight, eight, eight. Okay, past tense of eight, eight. See what I mean? You don't do that. Cat, eight. Just your eyes are moving. It's like the river. Boom, boom, boom. Slight vocabulary. It's accurate. Automatic without thinking. Sight vocabulary. Now, this is true regardless of the orthography, but we wouldn't use the sight vocabulary. Now, when we look at listening comprehension, <coughs> I'm switching to listening. Listening comprehension, we have the same phenomenon, but there's not a cool word for it. Rob, are you familiar with the word for equivalent sight vocabulary, listening vocabulary, hearing vocabulary? I don't know of a single word, but the concept's there. The concept is there. So maybe one of the things we could do in this conference today and tomorrow and Monday is come up with a word for listening comprehension for its equivalent to sight vocabulary and put it in the literature and to say, yeah, came out of this. Sight vocabulary, those words that we recognize automatically, correctly, every time, regardless of context, without thinking. Boom. Sight vocabulary. Really, really, really important. Oh, oh, I forgot. This came this morning. This is one of the things I did this morning. I wanted to illustrate sight vocabulary. So I've got two pictures that are on a time, two slides that are timed. The same amount of words in each sentence. See if you can read and understand each sentence, okay? Don't take notes, just sit and look at these two slides. Are you ready? You know your task. Okay, just read these sentences, that's all. Go. Okay. <laughs> you got it? Could you read the first one? Pretty okay, right? Let's go back. Let's take a look at it. Okay? Though I think those should be in all of our site vocabularies. Seriously. Not not a big deal. Okay? So there are a certain number, I forget, I count them up. Now, this one has the same number of words, exact number of words. <laughs> and there are only a couple, there are only a couple that are site vocabulary there. Right? Those Employ both and to its maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sight vocabulary. Really important. You could read this fluently. You didn't have to stop and think and what's the meaning of grand, what's the meaning of small. Your eyes just move. It's like the river. You went just like that. This one though, you probably recognize those words after you stopped and thought for a minute. Okay, I know covert. Okay. Got it? Now, what is a fluent reader? Now, this is my 